So let's see if you have the math skills to solve this interesting little math word problem. Okay, so the denominator of a certain fraction is three times the numerator. If two is added to the numerator and subtracted from the denominator, the resulting fraction is equal to one. What we want to do here is find the original fraction. Okay, so let me go ahead and read this one more time. So the denominator of a certain fraction is three times the numerator. If two is added to the numerator and subtracted from the, uh, the denominator, the resulting fraction is equal to one. We want to find the original fraction. Okay, so this is the problem. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, we'll go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Then of course, we'll walk through the solution step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so hopefully you understand the problem. Of course, we'll look at it again as we get into the solution. But remember, what we're trying to do here is find the original fraction. So we have this original fraction. Of course, it's manipulated um, you know, by the numerator and denominator. And after manipulating that fraction, the result is we have a fraction that's equal to 1. So we want to find the original fraction. So first things first, first we have a lovely uh, word problem, right? So there's a lot of information here. So I always say use the rule of 3, which is read a problem at least three times uh, before you start doing anything. And of course, we've already read the problem a couple times here. But when you're reading the problem, if there's some aspect of the problem that you don't understand, well, you're going to have to figure out or you're going to have to clear up any confusion because you can't answer a question that you don't understand. So never attempt to, you know, try to solve something that you don't get. Raise your hand, you know, if you're a student, you know, ask your teacher or go look up, you know, a particular word or phrase or whatever the case might be. But in this particular problem, we need to understand the denominator and numerator. And of course, this has something to do with fractions. So let's just quickly review this. And then, of course, we'll talk about a strategy to solve this problem. Okay, so when it comes to a fraction, matter of fact, let me just write a fraction here, like 2 thirds. So a fraction is constructed of two numbers, right? We have a top number that's called the numerator. And then we have a, the bottom number of the fraction that's called the denominator. Okay, so pretty straightforward. And what we're trying to do here is find the original fraction, right? So uh, what does this mean? Well, there was a fraction, okay? We don't know what this is, but when we took this original fraction, this certain fraction, uh, and of course this uh, the original fraction is what? Well, we have some information about this original fraction, and that is what? Well, it says uh, the denominator of a certain fraction is three times the numerator. Well, we're going to need this piece of information right here to come up with an algebraic representation of the original fraction. So let's just focus in on this part of the problem before we even look at the rest of the, of the problem right here. So what kind of algebra expression or variable expression uh, could you um, construct that represents a fraction where the denominator um, is three times the numerator? All right, so let's use the variable x. So the denominator is three times the numerator. Maybe if we let x equal the uh, numerator, the denominator could be 3x, which is three times the numerator of x. And that's exactly what you want to do. Okay, so what we're going to, uh, actually, let me just show you right here. What we're going to do is uh, kind of like specify this precisely. And so when you're solving a math word problem or an algebra word problem, you need to define or uh, specify what your variables stand for. So we're going to let x equal the numerator. So 3x will be our denominator, and this expression right here is our original fraction, right? So here we have a denominator that is 3 times the numerator, and that's what this problem uh, states. But you can see we have this variable x and 3x. Uh, we need to solve for x because once we um, know what x is equal to, we can build the fraction, right? x is going to be the numerator, and 3x will be the denominator, and we can find the original fraction. So how can we solve or how can we, how can we figure out what this variable x is equal to? Well, we're going to have to go back 
to all the additional information in the problem, which of course is if 2 is added to the numerator, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, to do what? Well, when you have a variable in algebra, what we're trying to do is build an equation, right? So we want to build an equation, uh, something with an equal sign, and it, uh, uh, of course, this equation must involve this expression right here. Okay, so if we could build an equation uh, where x is involved, then we can solve for x, and then we can answer the question. All right, now, if you want to go ahead and try to build an equation, uh, given that the fraction that we're looking for is x uh, over 3x, maybe if you didn't try this problem, maybe this is a good time for you to pause the video and see if you can build an equation and I'm going to give you a hint here. You want to use all this information uh, right here uh, to build this equation. But let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. Okay, so we're going to scroll down here. And we're going to, again, uh, use this part, the additional part of the problem, to construct this equation. And, you know, we're, dealing, uh, we're using algebra to solve this problem. And solving algebra word problems, the, the process is pretty um, standard, okay? So in other words, uh, you're just going to get better at solving these type of problems. You'll know what to do. It, uh, and again, practice, uh, it doesn't make perfect, but practice, you're going to get certainly better at solving these type of problems. All right, so uh, if 2 is added to the numerator and subtracted from the denominator, the resulting fraction is equal to 1. So what does this mean? Well, we have our original fraction, right? So 2 is going to be added to the numerator, and then it's going to be subtracted from the denominator. This resulting fraction is going to be equal to 1, right? So let's just double check to make sure that's what the problem uh, stated. If 2 is added to the numerator and subtracted from the denominator, the resulting fraction is equal to 1. Okay, so we have this original fraction right here. Let me kind of erase this so we can kind of double check our work, and this is always a good idea. All right, so we have an, our original fraction. So 2 is going to be added to the numerator and subtracted from the denominator. So now we have a new fraction, and that fraction is equivalent to 1. Okay, so at this point, we have a nice algebraic equation. So if we can solve this equation for x, then we can answer the question, right? Because uh, x right here, we can just plug in that value and we'll get the original fraction. Okay, so if you understand this, well, maybe you want to pause the video and see if you can solve this equation. But let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't you like how I sneak this in? But uh, listen, I definitely need your help. Now, my um, goal is to grow my channel as big as I can so I can reach as many people. And, uh, you know, I'm a math teacher. I'm trying to reach as many uh, students as I possibly can. The more students I have, the better. Uh, but if you're getting some sort of value out this, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, yeah, thanks for your help. All right, you know what? It's so easy for you just to hit that subscribe button. It's the best way to show support for not only what I do, but you're actually going to be helping other people as well. Because when you do this, uh, YouTube kind of pushes my content out more and more and more. And who knows, maybe there's a, a person, here's the world, maybe you're right here. And maybe there's a person way on the other side of the world that doesn't understand the same problem. So when you hit that subscribe button, YouTube really does help me connect with this person as well. Okay, so let's go back and uh, review what we need to do. So we have this original uh, fraction, right, x over 3x. And of course, we're going to add 2 to it and subtract, add 2 to the numerator, subtract 2 from the denominator. The resulting fraction is equal to 1. So now we just have to solve this equation for x. And then once we have our answer, we simply could just plug that in right there and right there. And then, of course, we'll have our final answer. All right, so let's focus on solving this equation. This is not that difficult. By the way, one last quick comment. If you need help with any of the algebra here, uh, check out my full main math courses. You'll find uh, links to them uh, in the description of this video. So if you're at the pre-algebra level, algebra one, algebra two, whatever the case is, uh, and if you're not a student and you want to learn algebra from me, check out my math skills rebuilder course. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into how to solve this equation. All right, so we have x plus two over three x minus two is equal to one. Uh, technically in algebra, this is referred to as a rational uh, equation, but that's not important uh, to really 
know the name, uh, it's a good idea to know the name, and it is, well, eventually it's going to be important. But this type of equation you could solve in a couple different ways. I want to suggest you want to use a proportion, okay, or think of this as a proportion. See, when you have two equal fractions, let's say one half is equal to, oh, let's say maybe five over 10. So this fraction is equal to this fraction. So here we have a fraction, but if we can think of one as a fraction, then we can think of this thing as a proportion. Now, why is that uh, going to help us out? Well, when you have a proportion, there's something called the cross product. We cross multiply, the result is equal. So uh, two times five is what, 10? And that's equal to one times 10, which of course is 10. So what we can do here is think of this one as a fraction, and you can always construct a fraction when you see a number. Let's say you see the number seven, just put it over one, and now you have your numerator and denominator. So let's go ahead and put this thing over one, and then we can use the cross product to solve for x. All right, so here we go. We have x plus two over three x minus two. This is one fraction is equal to one over one, which of course is one. And now we can just simply cross multiply. Now a little tip here, um, anytime you are cross multiplying, if these numbers were other than one, okay, you could get yourself in trouble big time in algebra. Matter of fact, if you had like a, uh, let's say a four right here, and you were cross multiplying, you're taking as four, multiplying x plus two, you must always put in parentheses around uh, these expressions. And oftentimes they won't be there, but if you don't, you're going to make a mistake. You're not going to use the, uh, the distributor property. I've seen this over and over again. And then of course, you'll be a sad uh, math student on a test or exam. So remember, when you see a sum or a difference, something that involves a variable, it's always a uh, good idea to put parentheses in. But in this case, with one, it's not really going to affect our problem. If we have a number other than one, it certainly will. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish this up. All right, so one, actually I already did the work right here. So one times x plus two is x plus two, and one times three x minus two is three x minus two. And now we have a basic, lovely linear equation we could solve for x. So let's go and do that work right now. All right, so let's get all of our variables to the left-hand side. Again, if you don't understand any of the algebra here, check out those respective courses that I mentioned. Uh, so we're going to subtract 2 um, from both sides. I'm sorry, x from both sides of the equation because we want our variables on the left-hand side. So over here, uh, positive x minus x is 0. That goes away. And 2 plus nothing is 2. And then on the left-hand side, 3x minus x is 2x. See, minus x is really a 1 here. That's our coefficient. So we have 2x and negative two plus nothing is negative two. All right, so now uh, we have two x minus two is equal to two. So in algebra, you wanna get your variables on the left and your numbers on the right. That's a pretty standard format to solving linear equations. So at this point, let's go ahead and add two to both sides of the equation so we can get our numbers on the right-hand side. And so we're gonna add down, and you wanna show your work just as I'm doing right here. So two x plus nothing is two x, negative two plus two is zero, and two plus two is four. So we have two x is equal to four. So to solve for x, all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by two. Four divided by two is two. Okay, so x is equal to two, and what you don't wanna do is be like, I am so smart, look at me, I'm ready for my A plus, and you turn an answer of x equals two because uh, you're not going to, uh, you know, you might get like a B minus or something, and you'll, you know, you're going to get angry. You're going to be like, what are you talking about? I did this problem right. Well, you didn't answer the question. And oftentimes, uh, students or people, they get immersed in the problem. They're focused on one aspect of it. Before you finish a problem, you have to always ask yourself, it seems like common sense. It seems obvious, but we, uh, you know, all of us forget, including myself, did we answer the question? And the question is, what is the original fraction? So here we just solved the equation for x is equal to 2, but we are not done yet because we have to answer the question, what's the original fraction? So remember, the original fraction is in the form of this uh, algebraic expression, x over 3x. So we need to replace this x with a 2. Okay, so this x, we're going to put a 2 here, and then we're going to put a 2. We're going to replace that x with a 2 right there and figure out the original fraction. All right, so x is two over three times two. So this is going to be two over three times two, of course, is six. So the original fraction is two over six. All right, so uh, at this point, we are done. 
And, uh, you know, you might be kind of thinking, boy, you know, he, this guy is so dramatic when it comes to, you know, highlighting these errors, you know, like this right here. But, you know, you got to remember, I've been uh, doing this stuff for not years, but decades. And I, I've seen, I don't know, millions of uh, people's, well, not that many, but, you know, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of tests, quizzes, homework, you know, and you just see these mistakes over and over and over again through the years. So when I emphasize something, you know, uh, hopefully you kind of say, you know what, maybe I'll listen to Mr. YouTube Math Man. Uh, you know, he sounds like he might know what he's doing. Well, listen, here's the deal. Even if you didn't understand how to do this problem, hopefully you're like, oh, yes, the next time I see a problem like this, I could do it so I can get my little happy face, A plus and 100 percent and multiple stars. And you definitely can do this stuff. Uh, but it does take practice and it does require you to have math skills. Just remember, uh, math word problems are an application of the skills that you learn in math. So if you're struggling with word problems, well, make sure you have the underlying skills. And then, of course, once you have those, then you can start working on, you know, getting better at this stuff. And it takes time, right? So never get discouraged. But uh, anyways, hopefully this little video helps you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.